Hey everybody, Shane from Shane's Books and Review. I hope that you are having a great day today. Today's book is Mech Wars. Yes, we are going to do it. Despite my reservations, I read it. Mech Wars was wrote by Scott Bartlett, and there's not a whole lot to say about this, really. There are some interesting things in it whenever it comes to the aliens. I hate to do this because this is opening me up, but in my humble opinion, I know that the guy tried hard. I know that he has a definitive idea of where he wants to go and what he wants to accomplish with this book, the story that he wants to tell. But for the love of God, man, get rid of the verbal diarrhea and just get to the point. You didn't expand on the places where it should have been expanded on. It just, it comes across in the pages. In the opening scene, we have this poor asteroid farmer and his son that we find out later on the whole motivation behind them being on the asteroid is that they have a sick family member that has to have operations, right? Because of these operations, they go out and they set up these asteroids for people to live on. And okay, that's kind of an interesting premises. I have been absolutely in love with Max uh, since I read Starship Troopers. I read that a long time ago, before the movie. That should age date me quite a bit. But ever since I read that, the idea of the whole space travel and the whole idea of having something that could change your ability of doing things, that would allow you to do more things and aid in bigger ways than what you could just as a normal human being, has fascinated me. Hmm, there's something for you. This book doesn't really do anything to add to that. It doesn't add to that concept. It doesn't add to that idea. Now, this is just the first book we're talking about, not the complete saga. I know that on Audible, if you're a audio reader instead of a visual reader, they have the complete saga all wrapped up into one. So I'm not sure how that's split out, but uh, at least that's there if you're interested. The thing about the mechs is they have to go into like this lucid dreaming state to be able to control the things because they're found as kind of alien tech and it lets them do a lot of fantastical type things. That's actually kind of blase. Not because of a lack of description, but somewhat too much description in areas. There's something that the Cohen brothers do whenever they make a movie. They respect their audience. They realize that their audience isn't the people that don't understand what two plus two equals four is. And instead of telling people what two plus two equals four is, they just show them two plus two and then let them figure out what four is. This book doesn't do that at all. It just gives you everything hand, hand fed, spoon fed, straight to you, straight to your eyes. The only thing that really surprised me was whenever the kid actually, in a moment of weakness, he plays this video game in this lucid environment, then he joins up, no questions asked. It's not very true. If, if he cared about his parent as much as it seems like he should, I don't think that would have played out that way at all. I really honestly don't. Now, fast forward a little bit, and the book does this for you. Just bam, you're in pretty much in the next scene. He's already joined up, and now he's trying to make his way through a bunch of recruits and make his way to the end of the training session. It wasn't well executed at all. Now, some of the stuff in it was well wrote. A lot of the same core ideas in a setup to a book, let's say something like The Swarm. Interesting book, interesting concepts. The guy was a scientist, but he ended up being a military leader because of his natural leading capabilities. In this book, the kid has no abilities fussing and moaning about, I don't like my commander. Oh, so what? You're, nobody likes anything that they really have to deal with on a daily basis. The point of humanity is we learn how to adapt, we learn how to grow, we learn how to get beyond the hurdles that keep us from becoming the maximum potential which we can be. The first premise is the kid getting off of his old man's boat and joining up with the military slash private company. The second premise of the story is the aliens. And the aliens, they were there, of course, before humanity was. They've been stranded and they don't work the way that we do. And in fact, they're portrayed to be complete and total one united socialist type of an entity. But each one has their own independent mind, but none of them really care about having a name. It's contradictory in its own way. There was interesting things that happened once I let that go. Can't have a hive mind type of a idea and then have individuals that have their own thoughts and emotions. It kind of goes against the structure of nature. Quite honestly, Scott, I don't buy that. Help me. Help me understand where you were going with that. But I do like some of the things that was incorporated to the aliens, uh, such as their mental prowess. They are apparently incredibly intelligent individuals. They have an ability to move anything that's metal because apparently they have superconductors in their brain. You see the excitement there. In the book, he keeps 
going back to the point of they've got these missile launchers that they can shoot this and they can shoot that, but we don't know how they pull the trigger. They've only got these things. Really? I hate to make this a video where it's like I'm tearing this apart, but if they have the ability to move metal, wouldn't it make sense if they have a momentary contact trigger that they could move that they can manage to pick up and hold it to their body, which is alluded to. Couldn't they trigger that momentary switch with their mind? Hmm? So apparently humanity is completely stupid in the book. Ta-da! <laughs> anyway, moving along, uh, they do end up on one planet, these aliens and humanity, they are getting along because there was a small amount of people that got stranded. It jumps back and forth between those two people sets so quickly that I missed it. I did miss it the first time. So I thought that we had maybe on the same planet, different areas with different names, different habitats having different names, two different sects of aliens and two different sects of humans living kind of in the same place and having issues. When one, the humans want to kill all the aliens and the others, the aliens want to kill all the humans, but come to find out, and the one that the humans, what? Yes. It's that kind of book. I'm gonna to have to say, just quite frankly, would I recommend spending your money on this book? No, I wouldn't. It's like that Sunday afternoon movie that used to play. You know, the one that nobody really wanted to watch, but it was just there, so you did. That's kind of what this book is. I am going to read the second one to determine if I even want to make a video about any more of these books from this guy. I might be completely wrong. I, I might be missing the point. If I am, would somebody please explain this to me? Understand. Now that I've checked it out and you can see very clearly what I think about it, you can probably save a dime or two. Interesting things that some of the characters did or didn't do. There is one main female character that we follow. There's kind of one main male character that's human that we follow. The aliens, which there's one subsect of them that we follow with the female character. And then there's a horde of the aliens that are against the male human character. The main problem I had with this book was continuum. On one planet, the aliens act completely differently and almost have a different mental ability, maturity, and in their thought process. It's almost like they're completely different species in the way that they think and act and talk even. Humans were divided. Whenever we are a focused race, oh my goodness, can we do some stuff. Some of the things that are in there are actually kind of interesting. Like there's these little things called gatherers that go and get raw materials and they play a crucial part of the story. Something I usually don't do, rating this book. If I were to give it a rating on a 1 to 10 scale. 10 being the most absolute phenomenal book I've ever read, which I probably even couldn't put a finger on because I've read a lot and that perfect 10 book for me doesn't exist. I haven't found the one book yet. I will probably never give that. That is the unicorn book that doesn't exist because it's not been wrote or it's been wrote and lost in the pages of history. See what I did there? But if I were to give this book a rating of 1 to 10, it would probably be a 2 to a 3. I'm not going to say it's a 0. I'm not going to say it's a 1. I'm not saying that because it would be mean, it's just it's not accurate. There are some interesting type things that are in the book, but it's almost worth not going through the book to find them. I gotta give it one, one thing though. Favorite moment of the book was whenever she gets called girl by her trainer a lot. So you'll know who that is if you read it. Whenever she ends up inside of the alien's craft that's under the ground because they took it piece by piece down there, they finally start talking with the aliens. In turn, the aliens start talking to them and they find out about the meddlers and all this kind of thing. So that that was my favorite part of this book. That's a pretty poor rating for me. Scott Bartlett, I would like to say, I'm sorry, but it's my opinion. I'm not saying it is fact and other people feel that way. In case Scott ever does see this, I, I see a lot of promise in your writing because you do have ideas that are on point and you do have some ideas that could be expounded on to become incredible. Don't rush. Let it happen. The last thing I would like to say in this video is share, like, subscribe. If you subscribe today, hit the notification bell. And as always, I hope that you have a great weekend. This has been Shane Machines Books and Review, and I'll see you in the next video.